Hey guys, welcome back. It's Unlucky Lucky episode number 13. Yay! Oh yeah, I would, say, so about I would say. I would say lucky. <laughs> you were like staring a hole through my head. I there thought for you were going to talk to people. I was talking. Okay. That, wow. Yeah. There were words coming out of my mouth. Hmm. It's such a good show that we put out for these people every week. <laughs> we apologize that we're not very bright. Yeah. We can't help it sometimes. But thanks to, uh, for keep listening to people in Seattle. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> thanks to for keep listening. <laughs> yeah. You know, if they wanted to hear sober people tell stories, <laughs> they're listening to the wrong show. I agree. Yeah. Thank you for continuing your patronage. <laughs> yeah. To the, our whoa. Podcast. If I could live anywhere other than the beach, Seattle would be that place. Okay, and why are we talking about Seattle? Did we get more? Yeah, I thought Seattle that's what I just said. I think. Oh, did you? I don't know. I thought I talked about them. <laughs> oh well, if not, the whole front of that conversation was useless. But, but yeah, a lot of Seattle people like was surprised me. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that uh, one place, that house on the hill with a car wash. The human car wash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that got some Seattle's, but uh, it's pretty awesome up there. I don't even remember the qu- what we called that car wash. The human car wash. Was it a human car wash? Yeah. Okay, well, good. Wow. Good, good, good. But, uh, All right, so. Welcome um, to Tequila and Terror, episode 13. Welcome to episode 13. Yeah, yeah. Fun. We're so proud of ourselves. Yeah. We're functional humans. <laughs> We're only a little drunk. All right. So, uh, today I'm going to discuss our first cryptid. What's a cryptid? Like, cryptozoology is, cryptids are like, okay, anything that is possibly an animal, but not an animal that people have recognized yet. So, like, Mm. Bigfoot would be considered a cryptid. A Keisha? I'm a human. Okay. I don't know if you're aware of that. I know I act like <laughs> I'm probably an alien, but... Only when um, you're hungry. I think aliens might be considered cryptids, but I'm not really sure. Hmm. Um, like Mothman. Oh, Mothman's cool. Um, <clears throat> and the Dover Demon. Whoa. So, what are your Dover Demon? I've never heard of this. Yeah. So, the Dover Demon is a cryptid that was spotted near the small town of Dover, Massachusetts. And they say small town, but it's like population 7,000. And if you're wondering, this is called pandering, too, so we get maybe a Massachusetts person. Massachusetts? Massachusetts. And also, I just picked this because I got into cryptids. Oh. Because of that dude on Loudmouth Threads making all of the cryptids. Yeah, those are cool shirts. Yeah. Hey, Loudmouth awesome. guy, if you're out there, we've Loud- bought a bunch of your shirts, and we want more. We haven't... Not him. We haven't bought his shirts yet. I'm buying his shirts tonight. Oh, what's the shirts that we have? The dude from Wicked. Oh. Wicked clothing. We love him. But also... The demon kitty. Yeah, we like demon kitty shirt. Anyways, we got way far off on that. Um, So, Dover Demon. Cryptid that was spotted near the small town of Dover, Massachusetts. 7,000 population. On April 21st, 1977. A 17-year-old named William Bartlett. He went by Bill to his friends. Hmm. Uh, was driving around with his friends Mike Mazoka and Andy Brody, who were also 17. They should go by Billiam. Billiam? Why are you keep derailing me tonight? Sorry, okay. <laughs> Jesus, child. All right. So around 1030, they were headed north on Farm Street. Uh, when Bill Bartlett saw that he, what he originally thought was a small animal on a short stone wall. Until his headlights hit the creature and he got a better look. He stated that the creature he saw stood three and a half to four foot tall, had an oversized watermelon shaped head that featured glassy lidless orange eyes, and that it was thin with long limbs, large hands, and large feet, that it had peach colored rough textured skin and was completely hairless. Wow. 
He stated it looked as though it had been crawling along the side of the wall when his headlights hit it and startled it. Hmm. Even though his friends were in the car with him, neither of them claimed to have seen the creature as a result of being distracted by other things, but both explained how freaked out Bill had been after seeing the creature and how they believed him. That would be pretty freaky. Yeah. So, I mean, there have been situations where you and I were hanging out. You were, like, half asleep in the car or you were talking on the phone or whatever. And I saw something that you didn't. So, I kind of believe it. Like the time you ran over the raccoon? Okay, no. You were asleep and you thought I ran over a raccoon. (laughs) But I didn't. A raccoon ran in front of us. I swerved. Nothing got hit. 30 minutes later, after he fell back asleep, he woke up having dreamt that we had a raccoon. <laughs> it's fine. Poor little trash panda. We didn't hit the trash panda, I promise. Um, but once he arrived home, obviously he takes his friends home. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm shook. I gotta take these fellas home. I just need some time alone. He explains what happened to his dad, and he drew a picture uh, of which I will upload to our social medias. Around midnight, the same night, a 15-year-old named John Baxter was walking home from his girlfriend's house at the south end of Miller High Road, which is a completely different street than the one that Bill was on when he saw the creature. Sounds like a beer I would drink. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Miller High Life? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After walking for quite a while, he realizes that there's someone walking toward him. Uh Uh-oh. He thinks nothing of it because they're in a small town. He assumes that it's just, like, a kid that he knows that lives close. He just kind of assumes, okay, you know, what up? I know you, no big deal. So. Yeah. So he continues walking, and he calls out, hey, but he doesn't get a response. Still walking toward the figure until it stops. So he stops as well, and he's like, hey. Who are you? Still nothing. He can only see a dark figure and can't make any features out. So he's just basically seeing a black blob. Uh, As he calls out a second time, he receives no response. So he steps forward to see if he can get a better look. But the figure abruptly turns to the left and runs across a ravine. He continues to follow the figure. And when he's about 30 feet away, he looks up. And realizes that it has a figure eight shaped head and a monkey like body and is staring straight at him. That sounds creepier than the other one. Yeah. He stands there for a few more minutes until he gets creeped out, rightfully so, uh, due to not being able to re- recognize what the creature is. He turns around and quickly walks away until eventually he's picked up by a couple who drove him home. Hmm. Again, small town, he probably knew everybody in the town, so that's not creepy, but. Not recognizing this creature that was walking toward him. Kind of creepy. The figure eight head is something I can't wrap my head around. Well, it's like a watermelon shape. Oh, He drew a picture, too. Um, He drew a sketch, and it's eerily similar to the one that Bill drew. So I'll I'll either send you both of those or put them on social medias. Hmm. Um, The next night, a 15-year-old named Abby Brabham. Brabham. Strong last name. (laughs) He's a lot. Um, she was being driven home by 18 year old Will Trainter when she saw something in the middle of the road. She stated that the figure she saw had an oversized head with la- large, round, growing, glowing green eyes. Mm. There's a lot of G's there, guys. And it didn't have any other fa- facial features. Um, so it didn't have a nose or a mouth, just really big eyes. Um, It said it had long spindly limbs, but that she only caught a glimpse of it crouched in the road. Dude that she was with saw nothing. Hmm. Investigators were impressed with how well the stories aligned. Lauren Coleman, a well-known cryptozoologist. That's a um, thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like an ancient alien astronaut theorist. Theorist? Yeah. Theorizer. Theorizes this. I just heard something outside that sounded. It's probably the Dover Demon. Probably. Dover Demon came to our town. Um, 
So Lauren Coleman, he's a well-known cryptozoologist. He led the original investigations, um, and he stated that we have a credible case over 24 hours or 25 hours by individuals who saw something. He stated the Dover demon does not match the description of any other creatures claimed to have been seen in the area. And it definitely does not match the description of the grays. Hmm. Said there are theories as to what the teens saw in their experiences. Some people in the town claim that the teens saw a moose calf, but it was the wrong time of the year for the, a moose to have been that small. And it was not common for moose to be in that area at all. Um, Coleman stated to have a bipedal, bipedal, a moose on two feet um, with long fingers. <laughs> I can't word with long fingers and orange skin, no hair and no nose would be more of a phenomenon than the Dover demon, which I mean, makes sense. Yeah. Um, other theories are that the creature had been a monkey or a dog, which also neither really fit the description given, but a for effort, you know, they're trying Yeah. got to explain it away somehow. Um, some believe that the creature was an alien, although there were no UFO sightings in the area during that time. Because that would really make it more believable. Oh well, no, it's had, an like, alien. Seeing, you know, like an unidentified flying object, that would make it more believable. Um, others believe that the creature was an escaped experiment, but there was no explanation on where it would have escaped from or who might have been doing experiments. Hmm. Uh, obviously, there are claims that the whole thing is a sham, but investigators as well as locals claim that those who witnessed the creature were all reliable and trustworthy, and Bill himself even recently claimed that he wished he had been making it up, and that he still stands by the story, even though it's embarrassing for him to admit. Hmm. Yeah. He basically, I read a whole article where he was like, you know, if I had been making it up, maybe I would have been able to monetize off of it. But I'm absolutely terrified. I don't like that this thing has followed me. Like, the the fact that I had to report that. Um, he was talking about how, you know, that he feels like people don't believe him still to this day. I don't. Um, Does it still follow him around? No, it was the only time that it was seen. It really? was by three separate people. In that, that one twenty-five day. hour period of time within that one town, and never been seen again. Never seen again. Hmm. Uh, there are claims that the area has been known to attract strange phenomena, though. Um, so who knows what it might have been or where it might have gone? Something in the water. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you know it really is an alien or an experiment. Hmm. That's pretty. So that's cool. the Dover Demon. I really think there probably are creatures in the world that we don't know about. Oh yeah. I just don't know. Or maybe it was a time traveling alien. Could be, or a and parallel realized universe. Realized that it had been seen, and it was like, "Oh, I'm gonna get out of here." That would just be creepy driving down a road and see that little demon thing on the wall, expecting that you're gonna see a kitty cat. And or to like be driving like, around in the middle of the night and see something that you don't recognize at all. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. Hmm. Anyways. What I think is weird is the rest of the people in the car didn't see anything. Well, they're teenagers, though. They're 17. So, mm. I mean, if they're, like, jamming to some Zeppelin. It's true. And, like, rocking out. Talking mm. about how they thought they were going to get some with their girlfriend later. And now they're staring at a demon, so. Yeah. And they'd also discussed, like, people were claiming that they had been drunk, possibly. I could see that. And dude was like, no, like we had actually been looking for beer, weren't able to score any. We were underage hmm. and we weren't able to score any. So we were completely sober. You He's know, like, if we I would yeah. have told you if we had been drunk, if we ever see anything solid proof like that, and they just go off eyewitness accounts. Nobody's ever going to believe us. Oh, God, no. Because like, we're too far in it. We have, we're too deep. We're too drunk most of the time, too. <laughs> Oh, it had big eyes. It, it gave me a beer. I feel like they would believe me over believing you because you're a little nuts. I just sound like a redneck guy talking about a tornado. <laughs> it was loud. It sounded like freight train coming to a town. Stuck my mobile home. God, what is wrong with you? Oh, Lord have mercy. It was, ooh, 
just don't worry about you. Should we put you in a home? Probably. <laughs> For why we're drunks. Yeah, that too. That sounds like a fun place, really. All right. Well, what are you going to talk about tonight? I'm going to talk about Jimmy Scott. I know at first that name probably doesn't ring a bell to a lot of people, but he is actually a pretty interesting character. Okay. I don't know him. You don't? Do I know him? Probably not. Okay. I did not know about him until I seen a post on Reddit. And uh, it's just pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Okay. He is the only person I know of that has ever been charged of causing a catastrophe. Wait, what? A catastrophe. I mean, I, a catastrophe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got the word. I need the story. We'll get there. Okay. You know, we live along the Mississippi River, and we've seen it at flood stages and experienced that. So, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, right now it's up quite a bit, but uh, in the history, there's been a lot of times, like in, I think it was 1935 and 40 maybe 54 and then 1993 it goes through these stages where it really gets crazy and the corps of engineers have built levees around it now so it pretty much stays in its banks most of the times it's been a it's a big part of our lives because this whole part of the country all along the river pretty much sprung up from nothing because of the river yeah and uh you know how i love johnny cash and and he lived in dice and then it flooded real bad yeah that's where the inspiration from the song five feet high and rising was uh at memphis tennessee the river was 60 miles wide there Mm -hmm. which would put that river pretty much like in our front yards yeah which is crazy that that far from the river the water was that deep that's absolutely nuts so there's been a history of the mississippi river flooding and jimmy scott here he grew up on the mississippi river and lived in a small town of West Quincy, Missouri. Jimmy had a good family life, but he was always into something. He became well-known in the town at the age of 12 when he broke into the local elementary school with his brothers and actually burned it down. What? Yeah. They said they broke into the school just kind of playing, and uh, one of them lit something on fire, and the, they tried to put it out but couldn't, and the school burned down to the ground so this kid's bad news bears from the start yeah it's gonna give you a bad reputation in a small town yeah because of like you're you're like you're you're a little heathen because you're breaking into the school i just i mean when i was little we wanted to not be at school on our time off i just picture the kid like milton from office space like i could burn this place down i've never seen office space gosh keisha that's it you know that that's one of the best movies Okay. But, uh, well, he did burn the place down. From that point on, he was a local celebrity. Just in a bad way. Yeah. I guess he was infamous in the town. Yeah. A local turd. So the police constantly at this point watched him. And by the time he was 20, he had been in jail six times for a variety of crimes like petty theft, burglary, writing hot checks, and even two more counts of arson. Holy crap. So little Jimmy here was a firebug. Yeah. Yeah. In 1988, one of his bigger crimes, I guess, he burned down a garage. Uh, It was like a local hot rod shop where these guys had their old cars at and they kind of worked on them. So he went in there and set it on fire. Holy crap. He was caught for that and arrested and sentenced to seven years in prison. I mean, yeah. But you know how the stories with most of these guys go. He got paroled and... 1993 after serving just seven years so or less than seven years of course yeah sorry we can't do math i've been drinking but uh after excuses excuses you yeah. can't do math anyway <laughs> yeah if you were out there and you want to subtract 93 from 88 that's how long it was in prison <laughs> <laughs> I think it was five. I was gonna say, is that it was five? as many. I think that's so, five. Yeah. It's this many throws up hands. Yeah. <laughs> but uh <laughs> old Jimmy got out on parole and he he got married, he got a job at the local Burger King, so you think he'd settle down, but no, nah, he still spent most of his nights partying and drinking. Because he's working at the Burger King. 
Have it's it your those way. chicken fries. Yeah. Oh, man, chicken fries sound really good right now. <laughs> Jimmy said if something happened in my neighborhood, the cops were the first to, to show up at our house. He said they show up and say, was that you? What are you doing? So this goes back to Jimmy being a little shit his whole life. Now he's pretty much got a target on his back. I mean, I don't blame the cops, though. Yeah, that's a pretty good rap sheet. Because if you do a lot of crap like that, obviously... It's more likely to be you than anybody else, you know, especially in a small town. We fast forward uh, just a little bit to the summer of 93. Uh, The Mississippi River was flooding due to heavy snow melt up north and double the average rainfall amounts. Jesus. So so the Mississippi River, I guess, surely most people know the history of the Mississippi River. It's pretty much like giant watershed for most of the... Everything east of the Rockies drains towards the Mississippi River, then goes into the Gulf of Mexico. So it takes a lot of water. But uh, it was uh, at historic levels this time and a historic amount of of flow, pretty much. So it was really moving a lot of water. And all this caused multiple levees to fail along the river. They said over 500 communities along the river were impacted. Jesus. And this was a huge natural disaster at the time. It says uh, the flood would end up causing $12 billion in damage before everything was over. Holy crap. Which is $26 billion of damage in our time. Yeah. So uh, people were really working hard to save their property and keep the water from coming in. Like you see this a lot uh, where people fill up sandbags and the whole town were really joined together. And if you watch like any hurricane anything on the news you'll see that yeah the levees were being shored up uh by taking dirt from the bottom of the levees and pile them on top and then they would put plastic down and put sandbags over it because what they had trouble with the levees were like 31 foot tall but the water was going to crest at 33 foot tall Mm -hmm. so it was going to go over the levee so their plan was to take dirt from the bottom of the levee and move it to the top just to make it taller Mm -hmm. but doing that it was making the levee weaker Mm -hmm. because it was taller and not as wide so kind of top heavyish and it's hard to explain to people if they haven't seen the mississippi river levees just because they're massive i mean around here i guess you just get used to it but it's really an impressive work that has been done i don't even pay attention to it because it's not something that we it's something that we're so used to seeing that I don't even recognize it as anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just been there my whole life. Yeah. And I guess that's the good thing about it. We've yeah. got so accustomed to it that, uh, I mean, if we anything don't ever think did about happen. It being a luxury to have, yeah. we're spoiled. Yeah. But uh, they were placing these bags of sand on there filling up the sand and then they they have a whole system so most of the town's residents including jimmy his wife and his friends volunteered to shore up the levees with sandbags and plastic so they would do that all day then all night they were partying well jimmy said he spent most of the day taking a shovel and filling up sandbags it was hard work so you know jimmy's kind of a slacker he he started screwing off looking for other jobs. So he volunteered with another group that walked up and down the levees looking for trouble spots in the levees. And they would find little spots uh, where the water was starting to trickle over or breach the levee. And they would take sandbags and place them into those spots. So mm-hmm. kind of like hot spots. They were just trying to get these sandbags into places that needed the most attention. Yeah. So that the levee didn't get completely washed out. And they did that for a while. And uh, that night they would leave because it was too dangerous to do it out there at night with the water that high. So when Jimmy was leaving, a local reporter stopped and interviewed him about the volunteer work that he was doing and the condition of the levee. Jimmy told the reporter that he had seen a trouble spot on the levee and tried to repair it. The town thought the levee was safe because the river had crested and finally started dropping. So everybody's kind of relaxing. Yeah. Jimmy went to party at his brother's house with a bunch of friends. It wasn't long before Jimmy was drunk, running his mouth, and he told one of the friends a good flood would help the catfishing. 
if the levee broke. Uh oh. Yeah. He also made a joke that said that he wished his wife would get stranded across the river if the levee broke. That way he could party in peace. This dude. That I mean. He's so sassy. Yeah. But I could see his point. Sometimes you, you, you women do yak a lot. I'm going to hit you inside the head. With your beer bottle. bottle. (laughs) (laughs) Let me drink it first. Then you break it off and stab me. (laughs) That bitch with a bottle. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, I could see that sometimes... uh Uh-oh, I'm about to get hit with a bottle. I'm going to say that Keisha's pretty. Hey, thanks. Yeah. I wouldn't really hit you. Yes, you would. No, no, the bottle. Okay. Like with an open hand. Yeah, or a bat, or a no, pen. Excuse me, I am not violent. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I have never hit you, Mm-mm. child. But uh, he wanted his wife stranded across the river so he could party without her bothering him. Jimmy didn't he know. Just wanted to hook up with all these chicks. That's another thing too. Yeah, why he's over there, she's over there. He can get with all these little Burger King girls. Yeah. Burger King biddies. Yeah. Jimmy didn't know that while they were partying, the level, the levee had broke. And now the town was in full, like, evacuation mode. Oh, my God. There was, a, a, like, a massive panic. Because you can imagine this levee breaks. And it's going to happen fast. Yeah. Floodwaters are going to pour in. Uh, a tugboat actually got sucked into the breach of the levee and slammed into the gas station in town, oh causing like a massive explosion and a fire. Holy crap! Yeah, the flood washed out all the bridges in the area, and the only way to cross was to take a two hundred mile detour. Jesus! Said a hundred or fourteen thousand acres of farmland was underwater. Crap! But uh, that's insane. To people not around here, where we live, to cross the Mississippi River, you either have to go to Memphis are pretty much Dyersburg, Tennessee. Yeah. And that's that's a pretty big distance. There's not just uh, river crossings all over. So if one of those bridges goes down, you have to drive a long way to get across yeah. the river. I mean, You've you don't really think about trip. that. Yeah. So a lot of people were having to take a huge detour just to go to the other side of the river. Yeah. But uh, no one was killed, but just... Due to that levy break, over $100 million in damage was done. Holy Jesus. Yeah. So that would probably be like $200 million in today's dollars, just yeah. by that math earlier. <laughs> just just by the fact that we're going to yeah. assume. We haven't done the math on yeah. that. It'd be like $1 billion. <laughs> no. uh, with the town and the whole country glued to the TV at that point, Jimmy's interview caught the eyes of many as being odd. Because... Uh, Jimmy said, they'll see me down there and say to themselves, Jimmy's not that bad of a guy. He's a good kid. If Jimmy can do good, so can you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, see, J- okay. one of my favorite words has come up. Uh, that didn't really work because the one of the local detectives that watched the interview, he seen it and started dissecting it. He knew all about Jimmy's past. and He said something didn't add up. He said his clothes were clean. Way too clean to be doing intense labor in the Midwest humidity. Said he wasn't wearing a life jacket because they were out there on the levee with the water that high. Yeah. And he said, uh, more revealing, he said, this is a quote from him, not me, that Jimmy was acting squirrely. <laughs> I think you said the word squirrely in the past three of I have. And right. I'm probably going to say it in the next three, too. Also, did you say it was $100,000? $100 million. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm looking at an inflation calculator. How many zeros is that? Uh, Never mind. We're just going to yeah. leave that. <laughs> probably nine. No, I meant how many did I already type? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have ADHD, y'all. I'm how sorry. much did you type minus the amount of booze you drank <laughs> plus three and count two tolls? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the detective said when he saw Jimmy talking on the news, he smelled a rat. He said he knew Jimmy's mannerisms. He was acting squirrely, and he was acting super skittish. He said he could tell that he was lying. 
He pretty much, Jimmy, just saw a news crew and decided to be interviewed. Because he wanted to be on TV. Yeah, none of I look, Mom, I'm on TV. (laughs) But uh, Pretty much. He said that he thought it was odd that Jimmy just happened to be on the levee at the same time in the same area where the levee had failed. Of course. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, wrong place at the wrong time is always bad news bears. Yeah. So the detective, since this was a pretty big deal, they started a task force to look into what happened at the levee. Of course. That included uh, county, state, and federal law enforcement agencies, including the FBI. So they went and found Jimmy at the Burger King, and uh, they they took him down to the station for questioning because they said that they were going to question him for a local burglary. 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 How can I not say, how can I say Burger King and not say burglary? <laughs> Ham burglar. <laughs> burglary. 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 Well, we could do this all night. <laughs> so. We have argued about the way that things are pronounced all night before, y'all. He's yeah. serious. Once Jimmy was at the station because it was Burger King of Stillens. Stillens. <laughs> yeah. They good copped him. They talked to him about his uh, stillings. <laughs> yeah. Good cop, bad cop, or just no? Good they just cop? straight good copped him. They're just like, oh, what's yeah. up, buddy? Oh, Jimmy, what you doing, guy? We ain't seen you in a while. Yeah. What you been up to? You ain't been in jail. For what real, you been though? doing? What you been up to? They talked to him for several hours, and Jimmy pretty much denied anything to do with the stealing. He's because <laughs> I can't say burgerly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. My brain hurts from laughing so hard. Jimmy says that he hadn't committed a crime. He said, in five years, I haven't done anything wrong other than stealing. I mean, but that's okay, I guess, Jimmy. <laughs> it's all right, Jim. We understand. Yeah, it's just I like, mean, we don't, but... I mean, starting fires funny. and stealing stuff is cool, Jimmy. Gosh. No, it's not. The detectives, they pretty much just picked him up to question him about the levy because they knew they could hold him for the burglary. Burglary. <laughs> there you burglary. go. I'm going to point to you anytime I'm going to say that word and you're going to say burglary. it for me. They Bitch. then ask him about the destruction of the levy. He was dumbfounded. He's like, he then told the detectives the same story he told the news anchor that he saw a, stro- a trouble spot pulled four sandbags from one area and threw them on another. He said he didn't mean to make it worse. He was just trying to help. He said, my town was in trouble. The folks at Quincy and West Quincy were about to lose everything. That's why I went down to Levy. I had no plans to hurt nobody. They needed help, so I helped. It was a double negative, and so he really did plan to hurt people. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) I mean, and he seems kind of like a goofy guy. I mean, he probably... Just grabbed some sandbags really? and it's like, well, this will work good here. I mean, didn't realize that. A big old method up dingus left yeah. in our town. <laughs> I could see somebody I'm here sorry, doing I that. I don't know if, if Jimmy, Jimmy, if Jimmy yeah. was on meth. The street's dirty. Knock over the water tower. Here we go. Yeah, it seems, seems legit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Jimmy said, I didn't mean to cause a problem, but I guess I did. I'm up shit creek. That's so is the rest of the town, buddy. Yeah. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, they released him from jail. Shit's river is more yeah. like it. Which, because they didn't really have a solid case around him. All they had was the appearance on the news and his interrogation. Yeah. Which, um, to me, that's not a really good solid confession. I mean, he did admit to moving the sandbags, but... They launched a deeper investigation that turned up just some sketchy evidence. Mostly him telling his friends that the levy broke, he wouldn't have to put up his wife. Which is still evidence. Yeah. But not very good, hard evidence. As someone who's working on the levy, you probably shouldn't say anything. That you want it to break. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't 
you shouldn't. You should just, for future reference, kids. If you're ever working on something, or if you're at work, don't say that you want it to burn down, especially if you're clumsy. Yeah. If it burns down, you're the first. Wi- or the True. first. That's a good analogy. Not witness. You're the first suspect. Suspect. Yeah, yeah. And just like Keisha said, the Quincy Police Department finally got an indictment on him with a law that had been on the books since 1979. He was charged with intentionally causing a catastrophe. So Listen. He was the first person ever to be charged with this. A catastrophe is a felony and is knowingly causing a catastrophe, death, or serious injury to 10 people or five buildings by explosion, fire, flood, or collapse, or release of chemical weapons, or the lack of. So, to me, that's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Yeah. I want to create a law like that. Yeah. That's like the anti-villain law. Yeah, pretty much. It's like Bane law. Yeah. Well, I thought about like the Joker and how like in the movie he like blows up the hospital as he's walking away. Yeah. This, Sorry. <laughs> uh, I mean, that is pretty cool. I kind of zoned out there for a little bit thinking about that, but yeah. <laughs> he was on out anyways. It's all. <laughs> this story was huge with the media because the headline that came out of this was man causes flood so could strand wife and party in peace. <laughs> <laughs> is there's ever... <laughs> A news article written about you, it'll have that same title. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why we're not married. Yeah. <laughs> the first trial was thrown out due to the prosecutor misconduct. And the second trial started in November of 94. And I know it sounds kind of funny, but if convicted, Jimmy faced a sentence up to life in prison. That's absolutely insane. So I had you on. It's so, okay, I know, I'll make you tired. I'm a, you exhaust me, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, Keisha, say burglary one more time for us. Burglary. There you go. You burglary. can say words. Burglary. The prosecutors and investigators <laughs> believe that Jimmy either removed or cut the plastic sheets covering the levee, then burled through the sand until water rushed in. They said the levee fell at one of the strongest points, and that area had been inspected two hours earlier. The prosecution presented numerous witnesses that said they heard Jimmy bragging about breaking the levee and pointed to all the inconsistencies in his story. So, poor Jimmy. I mean, but listen, what if Jimmy really did do it and he just never wanted to admit to it? Well, we're still getting there. He was squirrely. He was a squirrely little fart. And he had a bad history. Yeah. I don't know if I trust it. The defense had two soil science experts who testified that there was strong evidence the levee fell due to natural causes. Oh, okay. He said, uh, one of them said that there had been 12 levee failures just that week. Jesus. Uh, the other said that the last minute decision to bring in the bulldozer to shore up the levee actually weakened the structural integrity of the yeah. levee. Which it would because you're taking... You're taking width away to pile the stuff on top. So, uh, to me, it makes sense that that would happen. Yeah. They deliberated for three days. Or they were... The, they were mean, the trial lasted three days, and they deliberated for about four sorry, hours. Sorry, ADHD kicked in. So, it's like the difference of having, like... If you're building, say, a gingerbread house, and you're using, like... A thin wafer as your side, as opposed to like a thick homemade, home baked gingerbread cookie. One of them is not going to stand up very well yeah. to anything that you're going to put on it. So, or do like Legos. Take Sorry, the, I like food. <laughs> yeah. Or do like beer cans. Try to stack 30 beer cans on top of each other while I'm falling over. Yeah. But you could stack 30 cases side by side. Yeah. So it's you're making it weaker by building it straight up like instead of building pyramid, it out. Yeah, like a pyramid. It makes it easier. Yeah. So they took all the blocks off the off one side of the pyramid and made it top yeah. heavy, kind of like you. I'm top heavy. Thanks. <laughs> Listen, I can't help the size of my tots. They're there. Mm-hmm. 
very there. <laughs> They're very much present. <laughs> <laughs> They're a present. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Oh. They deliberated for how long again? Sorry. Uh, four I just hours. ruined everything. Only deliberated for four hours? Yeah. What the heck? The judge said at the, the, the trial there, uh, the jury came back with a guilty verdict. Yeah, of course they did. Because they the, wanted somebody to blame. Yeah. The judge said with his bare hands, he, prefa- he perhaps only moved a few sandbags, but he tore apart the lives of hundreds and thousands of people. Jesus. The judge also says it's funny that Jimmy's criminal career started with fire and ended with water. <laughs> That's a pretty okay. good joke. That judge is a smart yeah. man. Or a woman. I'm sure it was a man. Uh, I don't know. I didn't say. Because, you know, a woman would have been way faster than that. <laughs> but Jimmy was sentenced to 10 years to life in prison. Ten to life. Yeah. So he has to do at least ten years before he was able to be paroled. Said so right now he's up for rele- release in 2023. So makes me think he's probably not been paroled a few times because he won't admit to guilt still. Yeah. Uh, what's kind of interesting is, is he is serving time at Jefferson City Correctional Center, which kind of used to be Missouri State Penitentiary. Okay, so it's... The new yeah. facility. Yeah, right down the road. Right down the road from the Missouri State Penitentiary, which yeah. is hella haunted. Yeah, which is a really cool place. We've I'm sure twice. we'll do later. But We yeah. love it. But he'll be up for parole in 2023 again, and he'll be 53 then. Hmm. Jimmy said, there are probably things in my life that I've done that I should be in prison for that I never got caught for. But he said, I shouldn't be in prison for the levy. So... Doesn't he kind of figure, I mean, wouldn't you think that at this point, like, if it were you, you'd just be like, okay, well, I, did I didn't yeah. get put in for all this other stuff. So even if I didn't do this, I didn't get prison time for all this other crap I did do. So maybe it's karma. Yeah. Could be. I mean. Yeah, he became the first and only person in Missouri history to be arrested, charged, tried and convicted for intentionally causing a catastrophe. He Such is in crazy. the yeah, like the maximum security prison with all these murderers serving a sentence that a murderer would get. So he's in there with like all these hardcore people, and he's just yeah. little Jimmy who yeah m- may have. I mean, he's not little Jimmy anymore because he's almost fifty, but yeah. That's true. He's pretty old now. <laughs> Some people in the town say that he got exactly what he deserves. But a lot of people think that he was convicted unjustly just because they were looking for a scapegoat for somebody to blame. Yeah. I mean, either way, it makes sense. The The, the big debate is that the bulldozer are weakened to levy. Yeah. And other people say that it's, uh, they had to find somebody because of insurance reasons. Mm-hmm. They said that uh, the flood was an act of God, and when the levee broke, that wasn't going to cover a lot of the property damage. So they said if it was man-made and Jimmy did it, that it would be covered under insurance. I don't know how true that is. That seems pretty sketchy to me. If you have flood insurance, you would think it would cover it anyway. <laughs> I'm sure it only covered to a certain point, though. Yeah. But the levees were breaching all up and down the river, so I don't know what to think. It, I, I don't see why somebody would volunteer to fear, fill the sandbags and then breach the levee, but I remember that guy around here that was a volunteer firefighter, and he was out setting fires. So Yeah. So it seemed like Jimmy really got some kind of rush from just, I mean, all those fires he said. I'm sure setting a fire, and he sees that damage, then if he pull these sandbags out and let the the levee break. I'm sure he's going to get some kind of rush from that, too. I mean, people get weird power trips over over weird stuff. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that he definitely was one of those people, but I'm not saying that he wasn't because I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean, it's very plausible and plausible that he was just a scapegoat. Like, I just did a crap ton of bad stuff in my life, and was at the wrong place at the wrong time this time yeah the detective said that jimmy moved the sandbags to cause the levee break said he has no doubt about that because jimmy admitted that 
He said he doesn't have any axe to grind with Jimmy now. He says, I like that guy. He's a mean guy, but he's likable enough. But he sure does scare me. So, I don't know. I, I really think, just being from a small town, if you get a reputation, the cops can be dicks. But I also feel like a lot of times they're dicks for a good reason. Because you've been a dick to them. Yeah, because Jimmy was had a life time yeah. of from 12 years old. He was doing really dumb shit. Yeah. Like, if you don't grow up and stop doing dumb stuff, then maybe there's a reason that they're acting like a-holes yeah. to you. You know? And he I probably... Have a couple of uncles who are yeah. very similar yeah. when I, they were alive. I just don't know. I mean, if he... Like, he says he admitted to moving some sandbags to a different spot. And he probably didn't think that just moving a few of these sandbags was going to cause that much damage. Yeah. Because it was kind of part of his volunteer job to go out there and hit the hot spots with sandbags. Yeah. So in his brain, he probably didn't put the two together that moving this sandbag could possibly open up the levee that much. So I mean, Yeah. I don't know, dude. That's weird. Yeah. I <clears> thought it was <throat> just interesting to me that somebody that close was charged with intentionally causing a catastrophe it's such a fun terrible thing to be charged with yeah i just immediately like think of super villains yeah a super villain just so he could party without his wife yeah what would his super villain name be dr drinks a lot i don't know <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a good one. Super drunk. Yeah, super drunk. <laughs> but uh, that's the first non-murder story I've had. And that's our second story set of stories in a row without hookers. Proud of us. Yeah, but that is the third time I've said squirrely. Yeah, that's my first cryptid. Yeah, so it's an cryptid. episode of first. All the first. And it's 13. Yeah, it's true. 13. And also we had our first Nebraska listener. Did we? Yep. So we're slowly breaking into the those uh, states up there where nobody has internet. The mountainy states. One guy got the internet. Now he's sharing it with everybody. I hope. Oh, I hope so. We will be our best friend. Come yep. on, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska. Get those Montana. Little, yeah, we need Montana. Some Montana. No, Nebraska's the guy that listened. No, we need Montana. Yeah. Montana looks like a buffalo. It does. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> again. I was like picturing Montana. <laughs> and up on in the great northeast, I think the only place we don't have is uh uh the little one. The tiny one. Rhode, Rhode Island? Island? Yeah. That is there, the that's tiny not gonna one. help anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rhode Island, yeah. And still in the south we still don't have any Louisiana love. Share with your friends, guys. You think the Myrtle Share Plantation us. episode would be one that... Uh, They've heard it. They don't care. Yeah, it's true. If it's in your backyard, nobody's going to give a shit. Yeah. Anyways, but, so uh, thanks for listening. We appreciate you all. If you have suggestions, send them to us on our social media pages. We like to hear from you. Uh, it's... Uh, I forgot the name of our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, drunk <laughs> People Talk. At Tequila and Terror Podcast on Instagram and at Tequila and Terror Podcast on Facebook. We don't really use our Twitter, but it's Tequila underscore it Terror. Whoa, I'm proud. Um, uh, is it Tequila and Terror Podcast.com? Uh, I don't know any of these things. And I think, sorry, I just burped. I don't um, even know if the show was any good, really. I don't even remember most of my story. How was it? The first non killing one. You were real drunk, babe. How? I don't know. I don't know. You were... Was it okay? You interrupted a lot during mine. Huh. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit some of that out when I'm sober. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Um, email us. Send us messages. Tell Ooh, us you like us. Share us with your friends. Hmm. Have a good week. Yeah, meow. Meow. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. bye.